What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Midwest Whitetail. We say it time and time again, but we're super grateful and appreciative for you taking the time to join us this week. And as you can tell from the title, we've got a fun one for you between the Chasing November Season 9 launch info and then joining Tyler Bellman and Justin Lubrecht down there in northern Missouri. Those guys are going to bring us an update on that big swoosh plot that they've been doing so much work on this offseason, amongst a couple of other tips along the way that I think any deer hunter could find some value in. Um, before we jump into all of that though, let's go back a week. If you didn't see last week's show, Owen Riegler was gracious enough to give us a tour of his trophy room. Um, on top of some really big deer and overall awesome deer stories, we got some good tips and tricks in there from Owen as he goes down memory lane. So be sure to check that out if you haven't. And then before we move on from Mr. Riegler, wanted to give him a special shout out. This past weekend, he went down to Missouri for the ASA State Tournament and walked away a champion in his division. So I want to give you a super big congratulations, sir. And if you guys wouldn't mind joining me in that, I know he would greatly appreciate it. You know, Owen time and time again preaches how important off-season shooting is. And it's a really big reason why each fall, when he gets that moment of opportunity, he executes every time. So super excited to see how the fall unfolds for him. And then moving on to the Chasing November Season 9 launch, we're doing it a little bit different this year. Sunday, August 10th is going to be the launch day for episode one and different from past seasons, rather than doing a batch upload, we're gonna do one episode a day. So Sunday is episode one, Monday will be episode two, so on and so forth. And in the meantime, hope you guys are getting excited for this series. I can say Gavin has been working tirelessly on the episodes and I'm very excited to share them. So. In the meantime, let's go ahead and jump to the Chasing November Season 9 trailer to hopefully get you guys just a little bit more excited for season. And then we're going to join Tyler. And overall, hope you guys have been well. Appreciate the support as always. And I hope you enjoy the show. Coming right at us. You know, I've said before, these big old bucks, they put on their fur one leg at a time, like all the six-year-old bucks. He's not invincible. That's the one Daddy's gonna chase this year. <laughs> Holy moly! See, I figured it once we saw. Him. <laughs> That's it. Oh my gosh! Lucky. Oh my gosh, you guys! That's freaking lucky! <laughs> We're not even hunting yet, and I'm already just fired up. Season on, game on. Our rain is up. Yeah. We got him, buddy. The pinch strikes again, baby. <laughs> so pumped. Is that right there? Yeah. Oh, man. I'm shook up. That was a fun one time. <laughs> I can't believe it. He's walking to the right. Oh, God. <laughs> I smoked him. I smoked him. Come on, baby. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> It's July the 13th, and Justin and I are up here at the main farm. It's been a little bit since you guys have been with us. You know that last time uh, we were finished up the tail end of the swoosh project there. Uh, in the off season, we came in there, TSI did that big clearing, and we weren't quite done with it. Justin and I, we knew that there was a point we wanted to get to, and one day it clicked for us. So we'll set that redneck today, go over that whole setup. Uh, Mother Nature has blessed us here in the Midwest. The beans on that particular plot and the corn on the north plot that we typically hunt they all look great um you know we we are always excited to get up here and get work done on the farm we're excited about the season ahead of us and uh we have a, a pretty long list to get done today we're against get some axe mineral out and then in the few weeks to come here we'll be putting in our monster buck rut greens and uh doing our fall plot so we're excited we're going to get after it here today and try to knock all this out Guys, as you can tell, we got the redneck set on the uh, swoosh plot here. At the very beginning of this plot, me and Tyler was kind of unsure of how we were going to set up the uh, box blind on this plot, but it all clicked to us one day as we've got this ravine up the back side of us here. And uh, as we was taking all the trees out, we decided we was going to make a U-shaped brush pile around it. That way we could set the redneck inside of it. 
Uh, we could enter down along the ag fields, and then whenever we go to exit, we can exit down into this ravine, generally where all the deer come from. That way we're not busting any of the deer on the way out. We get down low like this here, they can't see it. We're up here on the edge of the swoosh plot and uh, we just want to go over and show you guys how we do our electric fence. So each year we have to electric fence all of our grains plots so the brass pressure will be too extreme for the uh, plants to get up and get growing until they're healthy. So what we'd like to do is we run a three strand system. Um, when we first start all three strands are hot. The vegetation is low. We've sprayed and, and knocked everything back but as time goes on uh, your inside crops start to grow and then also the same with the outside. We try to maintain that outside spray with weed eating and chemical. Uh, and then as time goes on and our beans get big or corn or beans get big and bushy, we shut the power off to the inside. But we, uh, the two strands on the inside are knee high and waist high. And then it's very important to go four foot for the outside single strand. And when a deer walks up, if you could imagine, uh, it's like an optical illusion to them where that that outside strand floats between those two inner strands and they can't tell how far it is it messes with their depth perception they don't try to jump it uh, you can tell here the browse pressure from the fenced in area versus non-fenced is is just extreme and uh, without doing that we wouldn't be able to have grain spots over and over again and uh, it's something that's worked really well for us in the past and hopefully it can help somebody else out and they can have grains to hunt over late season As uh, you can see behind us here, we got the redneck put in place, but we got this hickory behind us here and uh, we wanted to take it out, but the high lift that we got to take the rest of the trees out of this plot just wasn't quite big enough for this big old hickory. So we're gonna do it the long way, uh, double girdled it, and then we we'll use some Tordon to score it in there to hopefully that kills it pretty quickly. The reason we wanna get this tree killed is, is right, we got beans in this plot right now, but right in front of the redneck, we're gonna come in here and put a, probably some turnips or some oats right in through here. And uh, you know, we wanna get this tree killed because it's robbing a lot of nutrients from the soil. So we got that done. Now it's off to the next project. Justin and I just finished the final step of our to-do list today, and that was getting this redneck set up here on our big plot. You know, in years past, we always hunted uh, the redneck on the north side of this plot, and we positioned our food plots around the outside of this cornfield to allow us to get in and out. And in years past, Swoosh, coming out of this sanctuary, he would use this south side more in this, uh, what we call the dream season corner here. So this year, we decided, you know what? All eyes on Swoosh, let's move that redneck down the south side. We're gonna come here in here in the next couple of weeks and put in the monster buck rut greens right in front of this stand. And then we feel like we really have his bases covered. We have the south side new plot, what we would refer to as a swoosh plot set up specifically for him. And then as he makes his way north, like he typically does, uh, we'll be set up right in this corner. And then as the season progresses, maybe some new faces come in here. Uh, we can always move the redneck north, but we wanna make sure that we have everything in position specifically for swoosh. He's gonna be our number one guy. And uh, it was great to get up here to the farm today, get a lot of work done, get a little mineral out, and uh, just be as prepared as we possibly can be for the upcoming season. But Mother Nature has been wonderful here for us in Missouri. Uh, unlike last year, we had that drought and everything's shaping up. So with a little bit of luck and a great growing season, we hope that Swoosh is packing on the inches. Yeah.